All right, guys, time for the next video. This one also is from a gentleman who asked a question in the comment section. He knows, I, was, I think he saw my old video channel when I had a few caching kingfish in a broadwater videos on there. So he wanted to know if there's any tips and tricks I can share with catching kingfish in or Gold Coast broadwater. Uh, I'm going to say there is, yes to that. So I know in the one they are in the broad water, they're very hard to catch, they're very flighty because every man his dog chases them, they dart around in tinnies, drive straight through them, and they can be very tricky. So what I'm going to do is just give you a couple of my tips. You can go out and try to catch them, okay? Uh, it'll be a while before I personally get out there. Once again, I haven't got a boat and all that shit and everything else. But when I can, I'll try. But what I'll do is I'll just give you some of the tips that work very well for me when I was chasing well, kingfish in the broadwater. All sizes, from little puppies up to good fish like 18 kilos. This technique does work well for all of them. Okay, so first of all, you yeah, need a decent casting rod and a nice reel. And my outfit of choice, you might have seen in other videos, this is like a USA Palms rod. Okay, it's got a sea rapture. That's a nice 15 kilo, it's a seven foot. Okay, seven foot rod. Um, it's basically a 15 and 24, it's a light 15 and 24, it's a one hell of a nice rod. And that's a good old sustain 10,000. And it's spooled with 30 pound braid, 300 yards of 30 pound braid. Okay, just, that's just a nice casting outfit. And that's the first thing you're gonna need. The second thing, oh, I didn't even grab one, it's just a little rod, a little casting rod. Um, so I'll just grab this one here for the moment. So basically this is a little flathead stick, little 2500 graphite rod. Okay, and that's got about, I think that one's got eight pound braid on it. So, here we go, the tips I use. Just a couple of rods you need. Now, the first thing is when you're chasing the kingfish in a broad water or looking for them, generally I start off in March and go all through winter when the water's cooling down, it's nice and clean, and there's quite a few squid about. There's the catch. When there's other guys around chasing them, they be darting around in tinnies, they cast on poppers and stick baits and everything at these fish. And it's something I haven't seen before. Yes, you might catch the occasional one, but you're gonna miss out a lot, okay? This technique I'm gonna share, it works very, very well. And if the fish are there, they don't miss. You won't miss, you really won't, okay? So the first thing you do is fish start looking around March and throughout winter when the water's cooler on the north side of wave break and through the seaway, along the north wall of the seaway and along the wave break wa rock walls and the north side of wave break, you've got a big sandbar. You'll quite often see the kingfish around that sandbar in the shallows and some of those fish are pretty big. Just cruising around the shallows. And also off that sandbar, on the western side of it, there's a grass bank. So if you're fishing roughly, you should be fishing running tide, the last couple of hours are running tide, so the water's high, it's clean, like kingfish like clean water. And you go to those grass banks, and from basically now on, or once this weather clears up, we've had some shocking weather lately, go to those grass banks, cast little squid jigs around, and catch squid. There's always the squid over those banks. Sometimes they're only small bottle squid, other times they're the big you know, tiger squid. You catch all sides, all sides of squid there, sizes and types. Just go catch squid. I don't care of the size. I don't care if it's this big or that big. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'll explain why in a minute. Just go and catch a couple of squid and keep an eye around you for the kingfish poking up or even cruising past under the boat. You'll see the bright yellow tails. You can't miss them. You'll see those tails. Okay, so catch some squid. And what I prefer to use are just the smaller ones. It's only very shallow water and not a lot of current. So small light ones and work these over the grass banks. Some guys like pink. Um, I like more of a natural colour like so. Surprisingly, these plastic things with legs, they look ridiculous, but that's one of my best squid jigs. These things work well. I don't actually why, but they really do. I can't remember the brand of that one. I think it was a Smarky. Okay. Look at this beast. I've just got that. I haven't even tried it. Looks good, doesn't it? See? But my two favourites are just the natural, these coloured things here. Over the shallows. Catch and squid of all sizes. Generally, I've caught them this to this. It doesn't matter. Next thing you need to do. You're going to do just a decent, like, 8 -o. I think that's around a 6 or a 7 -o, but it's depending on the size of the bait, too, a 6 to an 8 -o. okay? 
in an octopus style hook. I run BKKs and Gamagatsu, I think that's a BKK. They're the hooks I run. Nice and light gauge, very, very sharp. All you wanna do is tie that onto, I usually run a 40 to 60 pound liter. It doesn't really matter which one. Generally 40 is enough because kingfish haven't got teeth. And if they get you around one of the anchors out there, well, you're screwed anyway, no matter how heavy your braid is, they're gonna break you off. So 40 is usually enough. So a cup, two to three meters of, you know, trace, tie your hook straight on. That's it, just straight on. Nothing fancy, you can snell it, tie a uni knot, whatever you like, just straight on. And three meters of mono to a, say an FG knot or an all bright knot or whatever you knot you tie, to your braid. No sinkers, no swivels, nothing else, just a hook and a couple of meters a litre. Next thing, once you catch your squid and hopefully you've got a bait tank, keep them live, put them in your bait tank. Once you've rigged up your rod, what do I do here? I haven't got a squid to show you with. This is going to be a bit tricky. Okay, so say we lay the squid out like so. We've got the head here, okay? Lay him out, put him down flat. Um, his head here. Where his head joins his body, his neck there. Um, on the top, on the top half, you'll see a little pointy bit. So you've got his main body, it'll come in and get to a point. Okay, you've got a little, like a little lip, a little point on top, just above his head. That's where this hook goes. You go through that little hook, just up under the skin, just above his head. So his head's dangling down, his tail's body's out here. There's just a pointy bit on top. Just pierce him lightly through with this hook. Put him in the bait tank. When you hook the squid this way, they can swim forward, they can swim backwards, so they ain't drowned. When you hook them in the tail, like some guys do, and like a snow hook them under the hair, which is great, the float lining and everything else, but the squid dies. I can't swim. You just once through the back of the neck, on top of his head, you'll be able to swim forward and you swim backwards. You just put him in, just pierce him through with this, and put him in back in the bait tank. Until you see the kingfish around. And here's, this is the catch. This is the most important part, this bit. Because everyone knows to use squid and live squid. Everyone hooks them up wrong, but Okay, this is the most important bit now. When you see the kingfish, hopefully you've got an electric or a nice quiet engine, motor over until you know with the outfit you've got, you should know roughly how far you can cast. And I'm not talking good whip, I mean you just want to lob it, just a gentle lob, because you don't want to cast a squid off. Because a squid's only held on through a little bit of skin with a hook just once. So just a lob. So you get your boat within lobbing distance of the kingfish you saw. Okay, it doesn't matter if, it doesn't matter if they're all breaking up, but if you just saw them generally in that area, just go over near that area to clobbing distance. Then pick up your rod and your squid and just give it a flick up in the air like a lob. So it goes up nice and high, comes down roughly where you saw the kingfish, and when it hits the water, the squid's alive, they'll ink. Here's the catch. As soon as I hit the water, you'll just hear it like a, you'll just hear them like belly flop on the, on the surface. And you'll look and you'll just see a big patch of ink. They'll ink and give it, I don't know, half a second, if that, and all you're gonna see is kingfish tails and shit and bodies going everywhere. They just fight over it. Just give you, you know, give them a little bit of line. Don't strike or wind in or do that. Just give them a bit of line and just hold on. Just stand there holding your rod and the king, whatever kingfish wins, because they are fighting over it. There's like 10 of them fighting over it. The line will start pulling up tight and it starts pulling up tight. Obviously strike, because it's, it's not a circle hook, it's an octopus hook. Strike, you're on, you're on. Just go hammers and tongs and try and lead them away from all the anchor ropes and anchored boats and stuff. That's it, that's how you catch kingfish. Not many people know that, not many people do that. They do use squid, usually it's dead or they rig it up wrong and it dies, it can't swim. I keep them alive in a bait tank and then I lob them. And when I lob them, they hit the water that hard, they ink, and once they ink, the kingfish go freaking nuts over it. They fight over it. And generally the biggest, strongest ones end up winning. The amount of fish we've lost around the anchor boats, there's a lot. But shit, it's fun. Give it a crack. And one more thing. This is old school from 20 odd plus years ago. People don't do this anymore. These things come into a craze up here from Chris Metcalf, using them for flathead, which is great. They, they work very well for flathead. But generally they were brought here and used in Sydney in the um, Sydney Harbour for kingfish. Get a sluggo, or what they call them here, slapsticks, slapsticks. And don't worry about the stinger, because kingfish aren't flathead, they're not pinching their tails, they're gonna swallow the whole thing. 
just put your decent worm hook on it and cast these things around and work, let them sink down in that main channel on uh, the north side of the wave break and just twitch them and make them look like you're dying garfish, you know, gliding as these things do and use these, not many people use them and if you can't find squid, these are a good option to use they don't work as well as a squid, nothing does but if you can't get squid, have a couple of these on board in case you do see kingfish, log these into the school and just work them slowly and get them gliding, kingfish love the sluggos just give them a crack because no one uses it. Everyone's casting slugs and poppers and stick baits. And these fish have been looking at those for years and they couldn't give a shit. Anyway, I hope that little um that little tip helps. Guys, if you catch a fish or something with these techniques, mate, let me know. Let me know. Send some photos in or something, let me know. And once again, if you like these videos and these tips and everything else I'm doing, uh, please subscribe. It does help me out. And I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.